When I was a kid, uh, Oprah did this show where it was Oprah's favorite things. And it was her just talking about all her little favorite whiz gadgets and things and stuff. You know, I don't know if you remember that. Maybe she still does it. I honestly don't know. Look at me. I'm Oprah now, bitch. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we are going to show you the ultimate tactical Christmas gift guide thing. Uh, so this is basically just a list of all my little favorite things. We're not talking about uh, boom boom sticks or anything like that, but we are talking about just kind of all the little widgets, gadgets, things that make life a lot easier. All the different, you know, sustainment gear and, and just different pieces that you can put in your stocking or your Christmas gift. Hopefully you can just send this video to your wife and be like, hey baby, uh, buy me stuff off that and we'll be cool this year. Uh, so I hope that this is a helpful guide to you. I will of course have a bunch of different affiliate links down in the description box below. So please feel free to use that if you find it helpful and if something from this video catches your fancy. So Merry Christmas and I hope that you have a wonderful joyous season celebrating the arrival of the king. So uh, with that, here we go. All right, first up is this Rothko jacket. I'll roll some B footage in here so you can see it. But I've had this jacket for, I don't know, two or three years now. I wear it a lot. Uh, it is a really fun, nice jacket to have. It's functional in the field. It's functional around town. You can get it in a variety of colors. I've done a review on it that's somewhere on this channel. Uh, I like this jacket, I would recommend it to you. Uh, and when paired with some good base layers, you can wear it down pretty cold. Uh, so that's also pretty nice. Um, but would recommend this nice sporty Rothko jacket. Which leads us to our second item, which is this Merino wool base layer. This one is a smart wool base layer. Uh, I don't know if you can see their fancy little logo right there. I'm actually wearing it, so I'm not gonna take it off for you. But uh, again, I'll roll in some B footage. But this base layer is my favorite base layer that I have ever worn. Um, I've worn a bunch of different ones. I have a pair of long underwear that aren't bad. I'll probably include a link to those below as well. But this Merino wool, smart wool base layer, it's just 100% Merino wool, is the best base layer that I have ever worn. It regulates temperature beautifully and it's a great base layer for when it gets anywhere below 60 degrees. Um, it's gonna do a fantastic job. And I've worn this out to classes that I've taken where we're running around a bunch and then we're stopped. And we're running around a bunch and then we're stopped. And this thing does a fantastic job. It's wool, so it has all those wonderful properties of wool. It's the only base layer I'm gonna wear at this point going forward. So, smart wool base layer. This is the uh, 250 base layer, just so you know. Next up, continuing our winter theme here, are the Rats boots. I've talked about the Rats boots a couple different times before, but I love the Rats boots. Big, big fan of the Rats boots. Uh, again, below anything below about 60 degrees, and you are gonna be set with the Rats boots. You can just up your socks uh, as it gets colder. But I've worn these down to five degrees, zero degrees with good socks, and I've, I've been pretty good to go. So highly, highly, highly recommend the Marine Rats boots. I think they're probably the best boots all around. Uh, they are Gore-Tex lines, so if you're somewhere hot or in the summer, you know, they're not gonna work. But like I said, anything below that 60 degree mark, which is about three seasons of the year where I'm at, and they shine wonderfully. Big fan of the Rats boots. This might sound weird, but a good roll of athletic tape actually goes a long way. Uh, I'm a big fan of carrying athletic tape in my kits, around my kits, on my shelf, uh, because you can use it for a variety of different things. I like the athletic tape because sometimes you need a little grippy grippy, and uh, that's nice to have. Yes, I also use electrical tape. Yes, I use duct tape, but athletic tape is a hidden secret that I really like. Also, I don't have a roll out here right now, but Luco tape, which I will include in the description box below, that stuff is phenomenal for blisters and any other kind of um, body ailment related thing like that. Cuts, bruises, well, I mean not bruises, but cuts, uh, blisters, anything like that, that stuff works wonders. So tape, always good to have. This is my current favorite shot timer. This is the Pocket Pro. Now, to be fair, I did break this one after a couple of years uh, and it doesn't work so hot anymore, but it does work great for dry fire and I can still use the timed feature. So I have had tried two, three different uh, shot timers and this one honestly is my favorite. And whenever it comes time to buy another one, I'll just buy another one of these. Uh, really, really enjoy this. You should have a shot timer, both for training and for dry fire type stuff. 
I'm a big fan of dry bags. In my bags, I try to do the bag system, right? So I have bag, little bags inside my big bag, and then I can get to what I want easier. Uh, so I'm a big fan of using dry bags for that. One, they weigh nothing. And two, then of course, they waterproof everything, right? So if you had to do a crossing or if it rains really hard or whatever, I don't ever have to worry about that because it's all inside dry bags. So as much as I can, and I don't do it all the time, but as much as I can, I try to use dry bags to store my kit. Again, they don't weigh anything and they keep everything compartmentalized and they are then, of course, waterproof, which is super nice. So have a good set of dry bags. Let's talk about gloves and glove liners. Uh, these are my current glove liners. They're crap, don't buy these. Uh, but I do want a pair of merino wool glove liners because I'm moving to merino wool and wool in general as much as I can over polyester because polyester probably isn't that great for you. So uh, those are polyester, they're crap. I'm gonna get rid of them. I will put a description or a link to the glove liners that I want and that I plan on buying this year in the description. Um, these are the Army Wool Glove Liners. They're the Trigger Figure, Trigger Finger Mitten Liners. And uh, I've had a lot of good success with these, big fan of these. Uh, I don't know if I'll have an affiliate link, but I'll try to put a link somewhere, some, somewhere down there to them. Uh, you might just have to look on eBay. I've also liked the Trigger Finger Mittens from the Army, again, also on eBay. I have, some people don't like them. I've had good success with them and my hands get cold easy. So I like the layered system. You know, when I can put a glove liner inside another glove liner, if I can do that here, there we go. And then I can put this inside a real glove. My hands are gonna be toasty. We're gonna be good to go. So I'm a big, big fan of layering the systems like that. Like I said, I just wanna get a different uh, actual glove liner here. Okay, let's talk about some little things here. First of all, let's talk about water, okay? So there's really kind of nothing but the gold standard for the uh, water purification tabs here. One of these is a purification, the other is like a neutralizer thing, whatever, okay? Some kind of water purification tab. Uh, I also like the Sawyer water filter, the Sawyer Mini, uh, which I will put a or in the link below there. Those are good to go, kind of wide standard, you know, everybody has that. I am also gonna try to move over to the HydroPack um, water filter system. So I currently have a HydroPack, this is a two liter. I like this thing a lot, it's a great way to carry extra water in your pack. They also make a filter that goes in line with this system. Uh, I don't have that yet. That's in my Christmas list. So maybe you might want to add that in, but I like that because then I could just use this whole thing as a dirty water bag. I could get a bigger bag and use that as my filter. That's kind of the system I'm going to try to move to because I really think that these are cool bags and enjoy using them. They also have a 500 liter one that accepts the Sawyer filter. So I'm also going to do that. So again, I can sew my whole water system in together. That's what I really like for water filtration. This is just a Camelback. This is a three liter Camelback. They have a couple, a couple different profiles as far as like long and skinny or whatever. This is kind of my favorite general profile one. It's a bit wider, but it's not nearly as long. And so it, it just fits in every pack that I've had. And I like this one a lot better as far as the profile in general. Now with things like the Yote packs and stuff, you're gonna need that long skinny one. But like I said, I've had a lot of success with this one and I'm a big fan of this, prof this shape profile. Let's talk about different multi-tools. Uh, I really like the, this is the Leatherman Wingman. I like this one because it has a scissors in it. So for kind of general everyday urban life stuff, having a scissors is nice rather than a saw. They do make one with a saw as well. Uh, and then this is the one that I most often carry in my kit because it accepts different bits and I really like the ability to field repair a lot of my gear so I have a bit set and then these bits and then I can repair the beer, the gear. This is a Leatherman Skeletool. One downside about the Skeletool, I will be honest with you, these are not spring loaded, the pliers. So you have to manually kind of do that and uh, that is kind of a pain, I'll be honest. The Wingman is spring loaded, that's nice, but again, I like the ability to uh, have that those bits to repair gear. And this is one of the cheapest ones that I've found that has that feature, so that's why I use it. This is just some knife blade thing that I really like. This is a Ruik, Ruik, R-U-I-K-E. I don't know if that'll come in there, but this is kind of my go-to folder blade to have in my pocket when I'm doing stuff. It's just nice to have a folder blade. I like this knife, it's a good size, um, and it's held up pretty well, so for whatever it's worth, I'd recommend this one. 
Okay, so let's talk about notebooks and note-taking gear. Um, I like, this is a tactical notebook cover. I really like these. You can get them at a bunch of different sizes, but this one happens to fit a composition notebook, so I think that's cool. Um, like I said, you can do different sizes. Big fan of this. I like that it has a pocket here so I can carry all kinds of pens, whatever. Uh, also, always have a Sharpie on you. That's usually a good idea. I'll put a link down that down there. Uh, this is my Write in the Rain pen. Uh, as you can see, I broke it at some point, but uh, it's always nice to have one of those. Or, you know, just use a pencil, like that's the other option. This is a Write in the Rain notebook cover and a Write in the Rain uh, pad. Again, big fan of this. This is a Spisher, Fisher Space Tech pen for, again, writing in the rain. Or you could just use that pencil. Again, as always, have Sharpies. Um, multiple colors of Sharpies is also helpful. You never know when you might have to write on something that's less permeable. So, big fan of keeping all this. The thing I like about notebook covers is it keeps the writing utensils with the notebook. That might sound silly, but then it's in one unit. Yeah, it's a little bit more bulky and it can be a pain, but that way it all stays together and you don't lose it and you don't have one without the other because otherwise you're kind of in trouble. So, those are my kind of two go-to things for covers for notebook stuff. Hope that's helpful. Let's talk about tourniquets. Now, you should have some tourniquets, like some real North American Rescue tourniquets and stuff. This is not that. Uh, you should have those. I'll put a link down there for those. This is a Rhino Rescue uh, tourniquet. This is some, I don't know, I'm assuming Chinese, foreign made stuff. But I will say, this is the best of the foreign made one, foreign made ones. And I'm not necessarily suggesting this for real world use, but I am suggesting it for, well, it's blue, so you guessed it, for training purposes. You should have some training tourniquets so you're not beating up on your real tourniquets. And these, I've had other Chinese tourniquets that have just fallen apart because I'm not gonna spend $30 on a training tourniquet. These, I think, come in around like eight or 12 or something like that, dollars. And uh, I like having these around because if I lose them or if they break or whatever, I don't care. But so far they've held up pretty well and they tighten up uh, painfully tight, which is what happens when you tighten a tourniquet down. So I would definitely recommend these as a training tourniquet to have around, again, when you're sitting around watching TV, you should be practicing putting a tourniquet on. Radios. So this is the Beofang AR152, which is designed to be like a PRC152. It's just kind of like the you know, the knockoff version. And then this is a Beofang UV5R with an extended battery. I put a different antenna on here off the AR152, same, same antenna that I had from a different AR152. And then a little, you know, push the clock thing, which is, which is nice. I have a couple different ones of these. I will put links in all this stuff down there below, but the UV5R is nice. They also make a waterproof version, which I have somewhere in my kit, but that'll be in the link down below. It's nice to be able to have different radios around. The UV5Rs are great because they're essentially disposable. They're like 15, 20 bucks a pop. You should own several um, because they're super nice to be able to use for a variety of different purposes. This one is a little bit more, you know, uh, battlefield oriented. I don't know how you were gonna say that, but I really like uh, this one a lot and it's got 10 watts of power and a monster battery. So it'll last you out there in the field, which is really nice. Pick your poison. When it comes to batteries, there's essentially three types of batteries everybody needs, right? There's the CR123s, there's the AAAs, and there are the AA's. Now I know some people are using the 18650s and kind of some other batteries or the CR2032s and stuff. That's cool, knock yourself out. But the way I like to organize batteries, and one of my buddies gave me this for Christmas this year, it was a little early present, and I'm gonna continue to do the system and pass this wisdom on to you, is this is a Magpul DACA pouch with the window in it. And then, you know, we have these little battery holders here, which I've been using these before, these are great. But he bought me those in different colors uh, for the batteries. And then of course I can put all my batteries in here so that I have one consistent system for the batteries. Uh, these DACA pouches are great in general for a variety of things, not just batteries. They're water resistant. I don't know how waterproof this will be, but I, you know, unless you're dunking this, I think you're gonna be quite all right. So I like having this as a system just to keep all my batteries in one place. 
Let's talk about cordage. Uh, you should have paracord and just like tons of it. Specifically, you should have some kind of working color, right? So in this case, it's like some multicam. Black works, coyote brown, green, whatever. Pick your poison. And then I like keeping red paracord handy because anytime, anytime I want to mark something that's a sensitive item or important item or medical, having red paracord around to mark that is super helpful. So keep some red on hand, keep, you can never have too much just, you know, work, working the line uh, on hand because you're always gonna use that for all kinds of stuff. And then in here, I just have some cheap foldy blade. Uh, you should just use whatever old blade you don't want anymore. This is an M-Tech USA, some cheap Chinese thing. I think it cost me like $8 at the time. Um, that's nice to just have in there. And then a lighter, you should keep a big lighter inside your bag so that you can cut your cord, burn your end cord, and then it's done. And I just keep this all in a, you know, fancy plastic bag here. So you should have some kind of system for your paracord. Also, when we talk about tourniquets, uh, this is a Blue Force gear uh, tourniquet holder. And this is designed to slide in between rolls of rows of molly, top and bottom. And then it just has elastic bands that holds your tourniquet on. I've used these and uh, zip tied these to stocks on my guns. I put them on my kit. They're pretty versatile because it's just two big rubber bands, you know, on a stick. And you can just kind of make that work however you need to make it work. And I've had a lot of success with these, just stuffing them in various places. They're probably overpriced, but I don't know. They are helpful and they are effective. So having a couple of these lying around is usually a good idea. Knives. So this is the Cold Steel SK5, uh, not the mini, the full size. I've been a fan of this knife. Um, I haven't beat it up a ton, I'll be honest with you, but from what I have used it, it's been great. I love that it comes in a Securex sheath. It's this Kydex thing, so that's not going anywhere. I've lashed this to all kinds of different kit and gear and whatever. It's always been great. And again, I love that it holds independently so I can lash it to whatever and I know it's gonna be secure and it's not going anywhere. Big fan of that. This is my kind of everyday defensive blade. This is the Black Hawk Be Warned blade. Reversible pocket clip, you can move it back, forward, uh, on either side, so that's really cool. And uh, just a kind of a defensive blade. One bad thing I will say about this knife is that uh, if you're playing with it a lot and you're opening and closing it, it'll get really sticky and it won't open and close very much. But other than that, um, great knife, enjoy it. Never had to stab anyone, but uh, you know, it's sharp. Headlamps. So this is a Slonic headlamp. Uh, big fan of this thing. It is bright as you can see and would recommend that thing to you. Uh, also, uh, you should have like a red, a dedicated red headlamp, which uh, is in my kit somewhere. It's not on the table, but I will put that in the link in the description box below. But having different headlamps, this is more just kind of a working headlamp, right? Like if I actually need a headlamp to see stuff manageably, uh, not for really tactical use, but just for everyday life use and or like range cleanup use. But my red headlamp, of course, is much more for tactical use, right? So that I can use that to duck under a poncho or whatever, uh, super helpful. Ponchos, by the way, don't have a poncho out here, but you should have a poncho. I'll put a link down there for that too. I'll put my favorite one that I've used so far down there. Back to our cold weather theme real quick here. Uh, so beanie cap, this is just a green, you know, skull watch cap. I really like this one. I, this might be a Condor. I honestly don't remember. Um, some poly, oh, this is a Helicon Tex. Nice. This is a Helicon Tex one. And uh, this one's great. Highly recommend it. I've used this for a couple years now and had really good success with that. So I would recommend that. You should have some hand warmers uh, in your kit in general, especially as you go into winter. It's nice to be uh, warm and not freezing all the time. These are my favorite socks. These are the darn tough socks. And these are the T4022. That might be a T4U. I think a T4022, the darn tough socks. And I have had great success with these. Again, anything under 60 degrees, I'm putting these socks on. I also have some much thicker smart wool socks that if I can find, I will link below as well. And those are great when it gets real cold, but these socks have served me really well. I own three pairs of them now, huge fan. And you know, cause they're darn tough. If they have a problem, they'll just replace them. 
A balaclava. So I have a couple different balaclavas. This one's representative. I will try to put a link in the description box below. But having a balaclava, super helpful. Uh, you know, the identity stuff is great, but mostly I'm just talking about practical use, right? Like being able to protect your neck and keep the wind off your neck. And or I like the balaclava because I can shove this down around my neck when I need, but then I can put it on if I'm wearing a helmet and I need, I don't need necessarily need a hat on yet, but I need something to keep the wind off me. The balaclava is going to work great. Field stoves. So this is the MSR Pocket Rocket little stove. Uh, this is nice. I also don't have it out here. It's somewhere in my kit. I'll have to find it. But I have the Esbit little stove, uh, and those things are great for like warming stuff up. This is good for actual cooking because it'll get hot enough. It is loud, but it will get hot. Uh, whereas the Esbit's good for like warming stuff up. It does burn very quiet, which is very nice. But if you need to warm up, you know, hot cocoa, can of beans, whatever, that thing is fantastic. If you need to do any real actual boiling, cooking, whatever, this one's your ticket. Let's talk about a couple different consumables. Uh, I like these large biodegradable wet wipes. I like these because one, they come in a pack of 20, so they're not, you know, it's just not a monster pack of wet wipes, so you can cut down on weight. And two, they're pretty large. Uh, they're, they're much larger than a standard wet wipe. And so I think that is a cool feature and helpful, you know, to keep yourself clean and not like a dirty Neanderthal. So highly recommend those. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably buy them again. I will buy them again. But there are other brands out there. Do what you want. I just like that they come in a small pack and they're, they're large. Uh, lighter, you should always have a Bic lighter. Uh, oh, that one's getting a little, little sad. But helpful to have a Bic lighter. I like these little fire sticks. This is one thing. I just broke it in half to fit it in my little fire bag. Uh, these are cool little tinder items. If you ever need to start fires when you're camping or, you know, for your backyard little fire or whatever, they burn for a decently long time and allow me to pile sticks on. So I've had a lot of success with starting fires with these. Uh, you do need to keep them dry, but they're pretty cool. Chem lights, you should obviously have some chem lights, a variety of different colors and a variety of different signaling purposes for all of your tactical needs. So have chem lights. I like having chem lights. Uh, CLP, this is the official break free mil spec CLP. The thing I like about this one is it's aerosol. It's an aerosol can rather than like, you know, just pouring it out. And so this helps me get it into like suppressors better if, if you want to do that whole thing, like on my Huxworks can. Uh, I like to spray some CLP in there. They tell you to do that in the manual to help prolong the life of it. So I always try to spray some in there before I shoot it. Uh, and or, you know, again, into the chamber of your gun or on a bolt carrier or whatever. I just find the, um, what's it called, the, the aerosol better. And this can has probably been running me for like two, three years now. Um, so maybe you shoot a lot more than I do, but my point is you will get a lot of use out of this. Don't shy away from the aerosol can. Okay, a couple of other semi-random items. Uh, one, a scale. Now, I'll be honest, this is the Amazon basic scale. I'm gonna try to find a better scale for you. I like having a scale on, like a, this is like a luggage scale. I like having a scale the way my kit. This one isn't that great, all right? So maybe don't buy the Amazon basics one. But if you can find a good luggage scale, that is, that is helpful. We'll see if, what I can link down below, but no promises. Uh, this is a snap cap. Big fan of having these. I have these for both my rifle and my pistol. Practicing malfunctions, dry fire, stuff like that. I'll put my uh, snap caps back or down in the description box. This one has a metal rimmed, uh, you know, cartridge like like casing. So they last a lot longer than the plastic ones. It's, it's a plastic tipped round, but then it's it's an actual metal casing here. So big fan of these, and I think they're worth the money. Don't lose them but they're definitely worth the money because they can, you can beat up on them for a long time and they're gonna last. For flashlights, uh, so this is the Streamlight USB light. Uh, and this one has actually died. It's not very reliable anymore, as you can see it kinda. So I do wanna rebuy this. This is a great light and I used it for multiple years. I like that it's USB rechargeable. So I'm a big fan of this little light and will again, buy this again, would recommend it to you. It did originally come with a pocket clip, but I lost that uh, out on some hike. I slipped and fell on ice and kept the light, but the pocket clip got lost. So the other one I like is the StreamTac, uh, Streamlight, excuse me, ProTac 2LX. I think this one's about 500 lumens. They might make bigger, brighter, better ones now. I'll see what we can link down below, but Big fan of this sucker. It takes two CR123 batteries, and uh, again, it, it packs a punch. This is my typical defensive light, 
And then before this broke, this was kind of my everyday task light. You know, you can mix and match, whatever. But I like this as a little everyday task light because it's so tiny. I mean, look at that. And then I can just, I always can have it. This is a more dedicated, like proper defense light that I try not to burn the batteries on. Let's talk about watches. I have two watches to recommend to you. The first one is this Timex Expedition. Uh, this is a more, a, a cheaper, more affordable watch. Does all the stuff, waterproof, tactical. If it gets beat up, who cares? You could always go the Casio route. I just like the Timex. The other one, this is my staple Nixon. This is kind of my everyday watch. And uh, I do like this one. Uh, two things I don't like about it is it's expensive. It was like a hundred bucks or something. And uh, the replacing the band is, I haven't been able to do it. And I've tried like eight or 10 times. You're supposed to be able to take these screws out, but I haven't been able to do that. And my uh, keeper broke on here, as you can see. So I just kind of grabbed a different random one and that's kind of been working it. I've been slumming it. But other than that, it's a great watch. I really like it. It uh, works at formal events as well as in the field. So I do like the Nixon. And like I said, I, I really like this one that I will put on sometimes if I know I'm gonna be in the field only and I'm gonna go to classes. Uh, this one's great. I also like that the uh, light up button is in the front and uh, that way I don't accidentally activate it anywhere else. So, fan of that. This is some old, this is not an originally old, but this is modeled after the old style Alice uh, rifle cleaning kits, right? And I like this because it folds up pretty well. Um, you could actually use it, you know, and, and like molly it in or whatever, or cl clip it into molly if you wanted. But this just has a couple things in here. Um, some lube, some, uh, what are these? The, whatever those are. <laughs> Uh, cotton swabs, I can't think of the name. And then I did stuff a uh, toothbrush in here. Nope, it comes with a brush, that's nice. So it's just a quick little weapons cleaning kit. I like that it has a rod in there so that uh, if I need to punch out a loose casing or something, I, my, my gun's not dead, I can feel the repair. So decently light, um, you know, I could trim some stuff down in here, but I like having the lube and all the cleaning stuff in one little kit. And then I just shove this sucker somewhere in my pack. So I don't know if this will be available still. I haven't been able to find them recently, but uh, if it is available, I'll put a link down there. Otherwise, you know, having a nice tiny little kit like this that goes in your ruck is usually a good idea. And you don't have to store it in a fancy container. It could just be in a gallon Ziploc bag. This is a, I believe this is a cold steel training knife. And I really like this because this is just a, a rubber training knife. And uh, when you're doing any kind of, you know, fancy combatives with your boys and you're practicing, this is good. It's also good for your sons to train your sons to be dangerous. My son, uh, who has stabbed me to death with this more times than I can count. And that'll give you some respect for knives. So have some kind of cool training knife. This one's great. Uh, I love that it's kind of modeled after the double-edged blade, like a real fighting knife. So would recommend this sucker for you. Let's talk about night vision. Uh, there are two things here that I'm gonna recommend to you. One is this case. So this case is a rain tactical case. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that there, but I really like this case. You could supposedly molly this in. I'll be honest, I've never done that. I'm not losing my night vision over these two straps of molly, right? That's not gonna happen. Um, it probably is fine. I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, but I like this is because it's a pretty small profile case and it just fits, you know, PVS 14. You can stuff that in there and then this, this will fit inside your, your ruck really well. Uh, I usually leave it folded up inside my helmet. It'll fit inside there. So I like that it has a small footprint. It, it's padded. It's probably about a quarter inch of foam uh, lining in here. So it's going to be pretty safe and pretty well protected. It does have these two, um, what are these called? Uh, places for batteries, that's what those are. And I just labeled one use, so I know which one is in use, because you always take your night vision out when you're done using them. And then the other one's there just for a spare. So it's cool to be able to have that in here. And again, keeps the batteries, keeps the night vision, keeps everything you need right there, and it's a minimal footprint. So I really like that case. The other thing I like is this is a Butler Creek um, a little flip cover. And this is not its intended use, this is like a scope cover but you can make it your nod cover and you just drill a little hole there in the front and um, then you stuff this on your nod. I'll find out what size I, I got and put that again in the description box and you can just order it. But I like that as a system for a nod. I know that a lot of guys are using the iris now, which is cool and I might move over to that. But if you want the poor man's solution, just get this little flip cover thing and uh, this has worked fantastic for protecting my nod and making sure it doesn't get damaged.
Let's talk about sleep kit. Uh, first of all, I have the Recon 3 Gen 2 sleeping bag. And this sucker says it's good down to about 23 degrees. I found that to be fairly accurate. Uh, once it gets under 30, it gets, it gets pretty cold in this bag. Uh, and that's when I was in the sleeping bag with a set of uh, Equix level two um, waffle top and bottoms on and inside this baby bag. And I was, I was just on the edge of being too cold. So, you know, 23 is probably pushing it. I'd say probably just under 30 and it's, it, you're, gonna, you're gonna be, like I said, on the edge of, of being comfortable there. But I do like the sleeping bag a lot. It's super helpful. I would not hesitate to buy their other ones. Uh, they have like up to a Recon 5, which is supposed to be, you know, down to a lot colder. So that's cool. And I would, I would buy that without hesitation. It's been a very good sleeping bag. I just don't know if it goes as cold as they say it goes, but super nice. This is just a bivy bag. This is the official uh, bivy bag for the Army, the uh, modular sleep system bivy. I have this one in Woodland. Uh, I doubt I'm going to be able to find a, an Amazon link, but go out and buy one of these. They're nice. Uh, you know, they're nice to have. I can't speak for the rest of the modular sleep system because I haven't used it. Heard good things, but I can attest to the bivy uh, being very, very durable. So highly recommend the bivy, particularly when it gets cold, right? I don't like to use the bivy when it's warmer because otherwise I just sweat and that is uncomfortable. But when it gets cold, the bivy is great. Let's talk about rucks. Uh, so this is the Yoke Pack. Uh, there's a couple different rucks that I really like for everyday tactical guys, tactical Minuteman people. Um, one is the Yoke Pack. I'm a big, big fan of the Yoke Pack. So there's a couple different companies that make them. Um, T-Rex Arms makes them. Eagle, this is an Eagle Industries. Uh, uh, Crossfire makes a version. But I like the Yote Pack. Big fan of having that expandable beaver tail in here. You can stuff a helmet in here, a coat, you know, pretty much anything you need. I've stuffed big, like, man pack radios in here. Uh, this thing is cool. Really cool. Highly recommend. Uh, the other two, which I don't have an example out here to show, are the Rush series from 511. Those are fantastic packs. I have owned a couple of those. Maybe just one, I can't remember now. But those are great, highly recommend, love the Rush series. The other one then is the first tactical uh, backpacks, which I will try to link below as well. Those are great, highly recommend those. Um, I have one of those that's their like 24 hour-ish size, it's like a 30 liter pack, and I have beat the daylights out of that thing and it keeps ticking. So I highly recommend that backpack as well. Well, this is just representative here, but this is a smock. This is a British smock. This one's actually a military surplus one that my buddy got me uh, for, again, early Christmas present. Thank you, you know who you are, I love you. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of the smock, okay? I own two different smocks. I think Americans underutilize the smock. Uh, we, we, we need to embrace the smock life, okay? They are great, I love all the pockets. I love that you can store a bunch of stuff on your person, that's cool. I love that. It is a pretty good layer. Like if I run with like a base layer, like a good like merino wool base layer and this, I can get down, I don't know, probably to 20, maybe, maybe a little bit colder weather wise. Uh, so that's really cool that you can, you can run pretty cold with it. I love that it serves as kind of a great overcoat for stuff. So again, they're, they're pretty wind resistant. And I mean like it's, it is windy in the state of South Dakota where I live. It is windy. And the smock does a great, great job of fighting the wind. And it's not even the, the windproof version. It's just, it's just a smock. They do a really, really good job. I love that they come with a hood. Uh, so again, cold, wet, rain, snow. They're pretty versatile to be able to keep most of that off you. Is it waterproof? No. Uh, under like a sustained downpour, you're going to feel it. But again, it's, it's a really good layer to keep most of the weather off of you as it goes and still be breathable. They're not Gore-Tex line, they're nothing like that. So big fan of the smock. Again, anytime we're under, I don't know, 60 degrees, 65 degrees, I'm probably putting a smock on because I think that they allow an amazing amount of versatility to carry stuff on you, keep you warm and keep the weather off of you even as it gets pretty cold. So highly recommend the smock. Well, everyone, if you've stuck around this long, I hope that you found that helpful. Uh, that is all of my favorite things this year that I have or that I could think of. So if I missed anything or I get done filming this, I'll be sure to try to add them in the, again, the description box below. So feel free to check down there for any secret missed items that I just happen to forget in this video. Happy Christmas shopping, Merry Christmas, and I hope that this brings you lots of good cheer. Do brave deeds and endure.